Hello once again fellow flight simmers here I am making another video uh, it's also related to a question that I got asked on one of my previous videos uh, of how I've done my home cockpit using SimVim uh, so I decided that it would be easier to try to make a little video explaining how to do what the person asked me rather than trying to explain it in text and it's a lot easier just when you're able to show something and so I took this opportunity to might as well just take the time to make a short introductory video of how to use uh, SimVim I am in no way shape or form an expert I, I barely started using it myself a few months ago and I've mostly done things having to do with buttons and switches um, lights and potentiometers mostly oh and rotary encoders too um, I have not really got into the display side of it which is what the question that um, I got asked is about but I'm gonna try to do my best to just give an overall uh, view of how to go about programming some of the functions that you want to to buttons or switches and I'll talk a little about displays even though I don't know everything about them because I haven't really used um, LCD displays specifically but I'll see if uh, whatever I can show you here will help anyways um, so basically uh, you know this whole project uh, is SimVim cockpit you know they are on patreon and I highly recommend you know you go on there and support them uh, especially if you plan on using the software I, I believe the only way to get the latest version of it is to actually become a patreon I am a patreon you know but I am not signed in right now so it's not showing that I am a patron at this moment um, but I just gotta say that Vlad and his son Roman are extremely responsive I have asked questions a couple of times I sent in an email and instantly within sometimes within an hour or less he already has a, an answer for me or whatever the problem was that I was asking about he he already provided a fix you know for that problem to make whatever wasn't working work again and it's just amazing how responsive they are and how much work and effort they're putting into this so I highly recommend that uh, you know you go on there and uh, support them okay once you do decide to go to patreon and join in and support them this is where they post all their their files which includes basically the configuration file the DAT file and the plugin itself so you just have to click on the link the latest one and like obviously right now they're on point zero point nine point three four they had recently released 0.9.34 and then they provided an update to 0.9.34a and they usually provide a little description of you know the the latest of fixes and updates to to the plugin so you download it and once you download it obviously you're going to get a zip file so you go to your download folder or wherever you saved it and you locate that zip file and then you have to do the extract either with a Windows built-in extraction tool or with WinZip or 7-Zip or whatever you decide to use after you extract it then what I usually do is I go find the folder and inside that folder you're gonna find the SimVim folder and inside of that folder is all the files that are going to go into the explain resources plugins and simvim folder so I usually just go directly into this folder and I copy all but then I remove the, the data file because I do not want to overwrite my data file that I'm already working with so I select all of them except that one I copy them all then I go to my explain resources plugins simvim folder and I paste it all in there and normally you would just say overwrite because you do wanna basically put the newer versions of the files in there and that's just what you have to do and uh, after you do this if if it included a new version of the firmware with a download 
the next time you open up Xplain, it's going to tell you that there's a firmware update available and if you want to do it. And of course, I would recommend that you do it because that is the whole point of downloading the updates. Uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, like how to use some of the other software. I've heard a lot of things about um, Air Commander. Was it? Yeah, is it Air Commander? I don't even know for sure now. Um, and also about uh, the Leo Bodnar uh, panels or, or or boards that you can do kind of the same thing that I'm doing here with SimVim and I never did get into those so I really can't speak about them I don't have anything negative or positive to say because I've never used them but what I can what I can tell you is that in the time that I've been using SimVim it's it seems amazing that you can do so much without even knowing anything so I am a very strong supporter of this project I started using it um, when it used to be called ArtSim X um, and uh, it was okay at that time it was a, it was okay you know but ever since they they started doing the uh, SimVim cockpit it has just grown so much in so little time that it's unbelievable the amount of functionality that they put into this I mean if you go to the to the website you can see they have very detailed sections on everything on on the wiring on the type of components that you need to buy or, or use with this project how to make all um, you know cockpit controls analog controls digital uh, seven segment displays and LCD displays which is what the question that I got asked was about and even servo driven gauges with servo motors and stepper motors um, pulse with pulse width modulation um, devices I mean there is so much here that I can't even describe it because a lot of this stuff I don't even I haven't even done um, but just to give you an idea of the kind of things you can do with it if you're willing to take the time to read these pages and learn um, and you know you there's just so much I mean he, he even shows you how to how to make your own stuff if you go right here to the tech tips section um, you know he shows you how to make everything up to and including a G1000 panel if you wanted to do that um, so I highly recommend you go like I said on my previous video highly recommend you go to their website and and uh, read everything just read 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 you know and, and follow the instructions and I'm sure that you can do pretty much anything that they are trying to teach us how to make right here now this right here is a configuration page um, and one of the questions that I got asked about is it like if once you uh, create a file if you can go back and and open it or do you have to create a new one every time and the question is uh, you can go back and open it and, and edit a file so for example if I go to my file if I go to edit it lets me go to whatever folder I have my file saved in which it would be under the explain folder resources plugins simvim that's where the data file is it's a configuration file so you select that one and you open it and everything that you have um, put in there is already populated uh, including the input and output boards I currently don't have any output boards at the moment I only have input boards and you can see in each one of these that it shows all the inputs that I have uh, assigned to all those different things uh, that's why when people asked also about if you can connect more than one Mega AT board or, or Mega 2560 board to SimVim I basically said no I believe you can't and you don't really need to because other than um, I think there's a couple of pins that you cannot but on all of these that are white you should be able to connect an input or output board so on each one you can do 32 I'm sorry 16 uh, switches or connections so if you can take all these that are white and multiply them by 16 uh, that's how many inputs or outputs you can have these yellow ones I believe they are they are ones where you could hook up an LCD display or a seven segment display directly so they are specific uh, for that particular thing uh, which is actually one of the things I'm going to show later on so now that you have your your data file open here you can go ahead and add something to it and I'm gonna use the example that um, the person was asking me about 
uh, because that's primarily the reason why I decided to make this video. So he was asking about if there is a way to make the vertical speed, uh, how you can see the, the number of your vertical speed, um, whether it's uh, you know positive in a climb or negative in a descent, if, you, if there's a way to send that to an LCD panel. So the way, I'm not going to be able to show you here because I already have all of these occupied, but actually I'll just I'll just uh, get rid of this page here and I'll go to a blank one so that you can see. So there's two ways of doing this right here um, using this software. The parameter table has everything, all the commands and everything that are available to select and maybe not all of them are available right now but if you look up here you got all the different categories so you got the flight controls, the gear and brakes, the engine, the ignition system, air hydraulic and fire, the fuel system, cockpit, anti-ice, electric, autopilot, MCP. Uh, so basically you get the idea. So in this case we're going to go to the autopilot and MCP because that's where the vertical speed um, control and indicator is. Uh, and basically so you you would find that particular function that you want and select it um, for example if we wanted to do the vertical speed we're gonna say uh, actually this is the vertical speed hold button so if you wanted to assign a button so that you can uh, say activate vertical speed hold you would you know select that function and then you would select an open pin and assign it there and that's all you would need to do and then you want to find the the ro rotary switch or the um, encoder so that you can actually change the value of the vertical speed you would go right here and you would go to vertical speed setting right here and then you would select that to an encoder which requires two different two pins together so let's say I wanted to assign it to 20 and 21 I would select it here and then you can select what kind of encoder uh, you have and I believe the ones that I have right now which is uh, the KY040 uh, very cheap encoders I believe they are a type 1 but you you can experiment with the different types and you can see that they behave differently um, and if you wanted to use a animated acceleration you can check this box uh, once you do that you click done and that would be that would be saved right there so now you got the button to to activate the vertical speed and then you have the rotary I'm sorry the encoder so that you can change the value of the vertical speed that you want to hold and then you need a light so the lights and and displays are under these two sections here so if you go to autopilot status annunciators uh, you can find the vertical speed light which would be see vertical speed mode is on so let's say we have that with a LED sing single digital output so you would put you would select that one and then you select whatever pin you have you have your uh, LCD on now if you want to use uh, an input or output board you can s choose any of these pins available and you can create one so you just let's say I cancel this for now and I want to do that and I want to assign pin number 40 to be an output mul multiplexer so I can select that and now that is an output so whenever I click on that it would give me the, whole, the 16 pins that are available on there so that I can assign whatever I want to them so now if I wanted to assign that light since this is an output multiplexer I would select <coughs> vertical speed mode is on LED single digital output I would select that output multiplexer well I guess I can't do that sorry about that let's select okay I put it on number 45 <clears throat> I'm telling you there's still so many things about this uh, that there he has these digital LED drivers um, also that you can you can select uh, I haven't looked into those so for now we're gonna delete this one here so for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna select the vertical speed mode is on annunciator light 
and I'm going to wire that directly to the Arduino so I'll select LED digital output and I'll assign that to number 40 so now this will get its uh, voltage directly from the Arduino so that when that light is supposed to be on your LED light in your cockpit will be on uh, so now for the display you have you have to go to autopilot outputs and displays and if you want to send that panel the 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 value of the vertical speed selection you have so you would put vertical speed commanded display full format because that's uh like you know it would be four digits instead of just two and here's a there's a lot of different types of displays that you can use so like the seven segment displays that are here um, I originally had bought this one here no, I'm sorry I had bought this one here which is a 7219 uh, actually if we go to the website and we go back to the to the input output guide and we go to the the seven segment displays this is a max 7219 right here if you could see that good right there it comes with its own little uh, board already and it, you have to uh, wire your own pin connections here so that you can um, hook it up to how the way it needs to be done and he explains right here how to wire it and everything so you don't have to worry about not being able to do it but to tell you the truth I was not able to get this one to work so I kind of gave up on it and then I bought some some of these which is uh, the T TM 1637s and these I was able to get to work no problem um, and then I first I got this little one but since I'm kind of blind already um, the numbers were too small so then I bought these which are obviously a lot bigger um, these are half inch numbers and these are one third of an inch numbers so this is actually like the one I'm using right now to do the the transponder code that I have currently in my transponder and these were a piece of cake to sign up to to configure and put in there you can also buy um, just the regular uh, seven segment display panels with nothing on them they just come by themselves all you can see is the pins right there um, and you can also make your own boards to do this and I guess these are a little bit cheaper but I haven't even tried uh, playing around with them or trying to configure them and then of course you got displays LCD displays like the ones we use w with the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi that come you know with their own little board and their their driver and everything um, I haven't tried uh, playing around with these either but that's what the question was about that I'm trying to answer um, and you can see a couple of videos he has of everything working here obviously um, now we, if we go back to the config guide I'm sorry to the input output guide and we go to LCD displays that's where he explains how to use one of these right here how to wire them and I'm gonna give it a shot in the next few weeks I've just been a little bit busy with other stuff so I haven't got to do it but um, he explains everything really really clearly right here how to send the data and a lot of different sizes of displays a 16 by 2 obviously right here he's showing a 40 by 2 and I believe there's a 20 by 2 so he he shows how to configure how to send all that data to the to the displays so going back to the configurator again um, I lost everything I had already put but anyway supposing you wanted to use um, like for example one of the TM 1637s that I had that I had uh, played around with so basically like I was saying you have two options you can go to the configuration table the parameter table <clears throat> and select under outputs and displays you're gonna select vertical speed command full format and seven segment display and you're gonna select the pin that you want it on but <clears throat> these you can only use directly to the Arduino on these yellow ones here so if you try to put it on one of these it's gonna give you that error that seven segment module needs to be assigned first to an empty pin 
clean, click the pin to assign a module. So you can't do it on one of those. So let's say I want to put on number 30. That one did allow me and then I select this a seven segment display module. And then right here I can choose if it's a max 7219 which is th this one here, the, the long one. Or if it's a TM 1637 which is the one that I have and this is a four digit module so I would select that <clears throat> and, um, and and then also, also you need to select you can select the brightness you can uh, select the the bus number which I haven't uh, I haven't really played around with with that part yet and you can select the volt the volts that the, volt, the display will be off uh, so I haven't played around with any of this so I really don't know exactly I haven't read those pages because I haven't I haven't messed around with it but it is very config configurable so obviously um, you can get it done that way <clears throat> I'm gonna play around with those things later and see uh, what it is that they do um, anyways let's just uh, let's just pretend that everything was good like that you confirm it and there you go you have a, a seven segment display assigned to pin number 30 now let's say you wanted to do it the way the person was asking me you do the vertical speed command you wanna say it's an alphanumeric LCD and then you're gonna assign it to one of the once again if you try to select it to one of these it's not gonna let you so you need to put directly to one of these um, yellow ones here so let's say that's gonna be number 35 it's gonna be an LCD display this is gonna be a 16 by 2 and once again you have the options for the power the bus the voltage and the brightness and confirm it and there it is and once you save your file uh, it should already be working um, the file remember needs to be inside the explain resources plugins simvin folder uh, and that's the way that the the configurator and everything will work the, the, the program the plugin itself but anyways I'm gonna go back to mine uh, if I open up my data file again and you can see that I have all these things already see on the, on the yellow ones here you can tell that I have a uh, direct um, I actually have different things I have a display on one of them that's the one for the annunciator and I have I have a, a light on this one I have some input multiplexers on these so you don't have to use them for displays you can use them for anything else but if you do want to have a display directly to the Arduino they have to be in one of these now the green ones and the yellow ones I really don't even know exactly what those are for they I'm I'm sure they're special that's why they're blue and in, in, in green not white like every other one here but I haven't really uh, found out what those are for yet uh, so let's say I made some changes to to my uh, to my thing like let's say for example on the on this analog potentiometer that I have the floodlights the bl brightness floodlights let's say I wanted to put um, I don't know air aileron trim oh, sorry about that so let's say I wanted to switch a an analog the A's are analog so you can put uh, uh, potentiometers there uh, so let's say I wanted to do a aileron trim for one of those so I just select that pin I can either add it or replace it if I add it it's gonna do both functions when I move that potentiometer but let's say I don't want it to do the floodlights anymore I just put replace and that will be the aileron trim now if I go to to back up in the top here I can just save it and then it will ask me the first time you open one every time it's gonna it's not gonna know where you're at so you have to navigate to your explain resources plugins simvin and there's the data file there so you're gonna save it and then yes you do want to replace it and then whatever new functions you added uh, are gonna be in there um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was that you don't have to use this configuration table a lot of the functions he already has them in with pictures so it's, it makes it a lot easier if you click on the panel and instrument layouts out here 
um, it's a lot easier so if you wanted to once again do like something to do with the 737 he already has a lot of the functions of the 737 panel um, up here so you would just click on whatever you want to assign and let's say you want to do some of the like the seat belt sign you know you can you can just select seat belt sign select what pin you want to assign it to I really can't assign it to anything anymore because everything is taken up uh, I think I have some room in this one so let's say I wanted to do that right there uh, I, I put it on number number 31 the first two positions of the, my multiplexer uh, and then I would of course go ahead and save it again but this is how easy they've done it is that you can just go to the pictures and select you know the fuel pumps you can select the landing lights or whatever you want to assign and boom put it in there and it's done uh, now if you want to close whatever you have open you just click here to close it and you can go and select another one so if we have things from the, the captain's panel the center panel uh, what do we have we have the first officer panel we have the FMC's so that you can um, you know you can create your own FMC pretty much from with this and then we have the throttle quadrant we have gotta close it again we have the fire panel and we have uh, the lights uh, the floodlights and all kinds of other things right there on the bottom panel too and he also has the autopilot for some uh, smaller airplanes I, I don't know exactly which one that's from and he also has the 737 MCP panel so all of these things that have a yellow or a blue box around them all you need to do is click on that particular thing and then click wherever you want to assign it save it and it should be working fine okay so now that you have your configuration file saved you added some buttons or switches for some of the functions that you want to use it's time to come inside the simulator uh, when you open the simulator normally uh, by default the status window will open for some sim bin cockpit here and this one right here will show you if your Arduino is connected how many inputs and outputs you have configured and of course the status if it's connected if it is not connected all you'll see is a little spinning slash you know going in circles now if that happens there is two things you can do to force it to recognize Arduino the first one you can go into the plugins menu and SimVim and you can cause a hardware reconnect um, and normally that will do the trick now if that doesn't work you might have to unplug the USB cable from the Arduino if you are using the USB connection and then connect it again and then it will show it will normally show up again right here if you're using the Ethernet connection you might have to unplug the power from it and then plug the power back into your Arduino and if you want this window to show up every time by default you can just check this little box right here and every time you start the simulator this window will pop up so you, so you can see that it is connected alright the second thing I wanted to show you here is uh, it's actually the firmware upload box this one here uh, after you download a new version of the, of the firmware or the DAT file and everything if it requires a new or if that file contains a new firmware version for the Arduino when you when you start it up in initially it will actually pop this up and tell you that there is an, a firmware update available and it will give you the option to update it uh, once you do that basically this window will close and once again you'll get the, the status window like this showing you again that it's reconnected alright so the next thing I want to show you here is the analog calibration window this one here is uh, for your potentiometer since I only have one right now uh, this is the only one that shows up for me but this is if you want to calibrate like what the maximum and minimum uh, movement of that potentiometer is so that depending on the position that you have it at that's what it will reflect on the simulator too so you can use that the next one is the gauge calibration tool 
and I do not have any gauges or any stepper motors or servos or anything like that so I don't have any options here. Um, the next one here is a very awesome thing, the conversion tool. This right here, it allows you to assign to any of the buttons and switches or anything that you have connected to your Arduino. It allows you to provide custom commands or data refs. So if you ever use the data ref tool, um, you know you know that you could see any changes that there is to the buttons that you click on the screen or or commands. Uh, so you can see the basically the data ref that is related to that function. And if the default configuration options that are on the configurator webpage, if they don't seem to be working for a specific airplane because the author of that airplane decided to put his own custom commands or custom data refs you can open up the data ref to find out what those commands are and then you can go into one of these um, that you already have assigned and you can actually change them so if i wanted to change for example uh, i'll just use the wheel light switch as an example if i wanted to change the command that gets uh, activated when i throw that switch i can either type some commands in these lines which will be the commands that, are, that show up over here on the data ref tool or I can do a toggle command which is basically a, one command for when the switch is closed and another command for when the switch is open or I can actually put a data ref um, but the data refs I believe they have to be writable by, by x-plane or else it won't work or I guess you can just use the default x-plane uh, data ref that is pre-existent. I've never tried, uh, I, I have tried a couple things with this but I never really had any luck making it work but it, it's just part of the flexibility of this program. Alright well uh, that's pretty much it for for explaining this. Now when I configured all my buttons and switches I did it mostly using the 737, the Z1 because that's the airplane that I was flying the most but the awesome thing about this is that if the authors of the airplanes don't change a lot of things, uh, normally the default commands and data refs will work right out of the box, just clicking on the configurator and assigning them to a button. For example, the course, uh, the course uh, button that I have, the encoder, it, it moves on this airfoil lab Cessna 172. You can see that it's moving the, the heading direction for the nav one. And if I do the co-pilot, course it moves the second one over here though, for the nav 2 and I didn't have to change anything if I change the heading on the that's for my autopilot on the Boeing 737 you can see that the heading knob here is moving moving on the on the Cessna and you can actually see the little button turning at the same time also the, the little heading of the knob or whatever so that's pretty awesome that all these things basically just work right out of the box um, without having to change anything. I, ha I have come across a couple of things um, that do not work. For example, on, on this particular airplane, I have a switch that I, that I use for the fuel select switch. And I'm using it for the, uh, I believe it's a Just Flight Piper uh, Warrior 2. And this one here, it doesn't do anything this particular airplane so you will come across situations like that and I haven't figured out how to make that work because that this particular airplane uses the fuel selector left and fuel selector right commands so I have to learn how to do that um, like I said I'm still learning you know so I don't know everything about this airplane yet but um, I think that's pretty much it for this part of it. well what I did want to show is um, see the file that you create is actually let me see if I go to the desktop go to my explain folder resources plugins and simvin the data file is it kind of looks like this um, you know you don't really have to edit this uh, manually because everything is done through the configurator 
that one but this is what it actually looks like um, this is what tells the software if it's a button a multi-position uh, the ones with M I think are multi-position switches these are four position switches this is an eight position switch the B's are buttons the T's with a capital T are toggle switches um, and then there's uh, the S I think that's just a regular switch um, encoders are in E um, so that's what kind of tells you what and this is what describes what type of encoder it is and I think the plus is if you want the animated um, movement or the acceleration animation um, so this is pretty much what it looks like everything that I have assigned to the outputs here my lights and everything else are inputs so well that's pretty much it I think that I can explain at this time I'm sure that there will be a lot more questions that pop up and maybe this is the first time I actually do a screen share video so hopefully it worked out and hopefully it helps maybe I'll be answering a lot more questions even though like I said before I am no expert by any means I really hope I am not giving any wrong information uh, but I highly once again recommend that you go to simvim.com and read everything that they have on there and read it again and uh, this is an awesome project I highly recommend you go on patreon and, and back them you know support them with whatever you can and you'll have access to the latest uh, firmware version and it's just amazing stuff alright well that's it for now hopefully this video will do some good